Hello, Thomas Boyle here from Countryside Baptist Church in Port Washington, Ohio. Today I'm here to show you and explain to you how you can have eternal life and be saved. And I've put together a presentation book. Everything in the presentation book comes straight out of the King James Bible. All I did was capture a few verses and uh, blew them up a little bit so everybody can uh, follow along and understand them. And I call this the ABC plan of salvation. And the reason I do is because it's so easy anybody can be saved. In fact, the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And of course, the very first letter that we come to is A. And the first step for you to have eternal life is you need to acknowledge that you are a lost sinner. It very clearly in the Bible tells us, as it is written, there is none righteous. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. You see, I grew up uh, going to church every Sunday with my family. And the church I went to, they taught me, Tom, if you're good, maybe you'll go to heaven. But the Bible shoots that down very clearly, and it says, there is none that doeth good. No, not one. Nobody can go to heaven by being good. You see, there's actually two gospels out there. There's the gospel that teaches if you're good, you'll go to heaven. You know, good people go to heaven, bad people go to hell. And that's what they were teaching me. And then there's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to show the, the clear difference between the two before we get done. But I want you to make a note. It says, as it is written, there is none righteous. I want you to uh, keep that in mind because later on in the presentation, that's going to come into play. Jesus himself said, and he's talking to the religious crowd here, he said, even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. You see, we have a unique way of cleaning ourselves up and uh, appearing to be okay in the eyes of man. He also told them, ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your heart. God knows every secret thing that you've done in the dark your whole life. And so even though we look good on the outside, in fact, I call them casual sinners. Most people I talk to are casual sinners. You know, you're not in prison and you haven't done any criminal deeds. In fact, you know, you're honest and kind and generous, but God looks deeper than that. And so in order for you to be saved, the absolute very first step is you need to humble yourself and you need to see yourself like God sees you as an ungodly sinner. Now, the really good news is the letter B, and that is believe with all your heart. Now, here's the million-dollar question that everybody should ask themselves. In fact, it's found in the Bible, in the book of Acts. And the question is, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's as easy as it gets. All God is asking you to do is simply believe. There's nothing in this answer that tells you you have to be baptized. You have to join a church. You have to keep the Ten Commandments the best you can or live a good moral life and maybe you'll go to heaven. No. All God is asking is that you simply believe. Now, here's the problem. Now, I grew up in church, and I believed the Bible. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus Christ. I believed in heaven and hell. But I didn't get saved until I was 22 years old. Why? If I believed all that, and it's asking me to believe, then why wasn't I saved until I was 22? And the answer is found in the Bible. And Jesus himself said, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. I was believing the wrong gospel. I was believing the gospel that they taught me in church, that good people go to heaven and bad people go to hell. And that's not the gospel that God wants you to believe in. He wants you to believe in the gospel that's found in the scriptures. And before we go any further, I want, you to, I want to explain to you this word repent. Now, there's a lot of misunderstanding about this word repent. But the easiest one word definition is change. God wants you to change what you think, have a change of heart. And when it comes to salvation, he wants to change what you believe. 
And that's how I got saved. When I changed from believing in the wrong gospel and I put my faith in the right gospel, that's when I got saved. Over here in the Bible says, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now at the end of the presentation, the Lord's going to ask you to make a choice. Do you believe what the Bible says about salvation or do you believe what your church is teaching you? Because clearly there's going to be a difference, and I'm going to show you the big difference here in just a minute. And so always, 100% of the time, put your faith and trust in the Bible. That's the only thing that's true. Man's religion is going to lead you astray. Now, here's the letter C, and this is the true gospel of Christ, and that's the cross. It says, God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is far and away the absolute best definition for grace. Even when we're ungodly sinners, God loved us. And he proved his love by sending Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, to die for us. That is the love of God and the grace of God. In fact, it says over here, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. What greater sacrifice could Jesus have paid than the supreme sacrifice of dying on the cross? In fact, the resurrection of Christ proves that God was satisfied with that payment. Otherwise, Jesus would still be in the tomb. But because of the resurrection, we know that God was satisfied with the payment that Jesus made. And here's how it works. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. You see, there's only one thing that's going to wash away your sins, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I talk to a lot of people about their soul, and I'll ask them, do you, do you believe that when you die, you'll go to heaven? Automatically, the first thing out of their mouth is, well, yeah, I've been baptized. No, baptism doesn't wash away one single sin. Baptism doesn't wash away anything. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, here's the really good news. Even the forgiveness of sins. You see, when I got saved, God forgave me from the sins from the day I was born until the day I'm going to die. All of my sins are forgiven. It's a one-time transaction. I can pillow my head at night, and I know that I'm going to heaven, and I know I have eternal life because all of my sins are forgiven. It's a one-time transaction. Now, if you took the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you cut it right in half to make it easier for me to explain. What I've shared with you is the first half of the gospel, and that is that you're a sinner, and Christ died for you, and when he did, he paid for your sins. God the Father up in heaven said, I'm satisfied the sins of the world are paid for. And a lot of people make the mistake, and they stop right there, and they say, well, then I must be a Christian because I believe that. Well, that's good. You, you need to believe that. But that's only the first half. That's the half that God did. That's everything that Jesus has done for you. Now, the second half of the gospel is what I'm going to show you, and that's your part. You have to also believe the second half of the gospel, and that is the letter D. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Deny your good works. All of the religious people that I talk to that either are a church member or they go to church regularly have a really hard time with this. But the Bible very clearly says, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Nobody goes to heaven by being good. It says, therefore, we conclude the man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. All you have to do is put your faith and believe in Jesus Christ and his gospel, and you can be saved. Now, a lot of people teach, well, okay, yeah, you're a sinner, and Christ died for you, and you got to get saved. And now, because you got saved, now you have to live the good Christian life, and you have to keep it, because if you miss up and, and, and sin and commit some heinous crime, well, then you're going to lose it. No, you can never lose your salvation because it says right here, it's by faith without the deeds of the law. 
Now, this next two verses is um, the most important verses in my uh, presentation book. And it's very easy to understand. Follow along. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, there's nobody in heaven right now that's saying, whew, boy, I'm glad I was good enough to get here. No, they're all falling down at the feet of Jesus saying, unworthy, unworthy. You see, it's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. God wants to give you eternal life for free absolutely free you don't have to work for it you don't have to earn it and you certainly don't deserve it it's not of yourselves it's a gift of god not of works otherwise we go around bragging about how good we are now here's how it works and allow me to read it this way it says god hath made jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him now, when I got saved, I was 22 years old when I got saved, and I put my faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I did, now the Bible calls it imputed righteousness. So when I got saved, God took the righteousness of Christ, who was absolutely sinless, and he moved it over to my name. I have the righteousness of Christ. I'm not going to heaven because I'm good. I'm going to heaven because Jesus Christ was perfect and he gave me his righteousness for free. That's all you have to do is put your faith in Christ's righteousness. But in order to do that, you have to deny your righteousness. And so many religious people have a hard time with that. When I got saved, I had to deny my baptism. I had to deny my religion. And I had to come to Jesus Christ empty-handed and stand there empty and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need your righteousness. And that's the second half of the gospel. That's when you get saved. Now, I got one more letter, and then I'm done. And that's, of course, E, eternal life or eternal death. You see, you have a living soul. And when you die, that's not the end of it. You will spend eternity either in heaven or in hell, and the choice is yours. You see, it very clearly says in the book of Hebrews, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Every one of us will stand before God, and we will be judged, and it's a fearful thing. Now, Jesus, in the Gospels, gave us just a small glimpse of what that judgment day is going to look like. And this is what Jesus said. He said, Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. That's a pretty good resume. Now, this is what Jesus told them, or will tell them. And I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The saddest words ever to be spoken will be said at the judgment seat of Christ, and Jesus is going to say, Depart from me, I never knew you. Now, how can he say that to these people here? Now, these, this is not some uh, foreign religion. This is people down here at your local church. Just pick one. And they're sitting in the pews, they're singing the songs, listening to the sermons on how to be a good neighbor. And they're doing many wonderful works. And yet Jesus Christ sends them to hell. Why? Because they are trusting their righteousness. And they did not trust in the righteousness of Christ that God was offering to them for free. They're all trying to work their own way. Now, you got 101 different uh, religions out there, and you got 101 different ways on how to be good and how to earn your salvation. And yet Jesus Christ in his Bible is telling you it can be yours for free. You see, the Bible says over in Isaiah, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. So when you stand before God at the judgment day, 
you're going to be standing in your righteousness full of filthy rags. You take the best deed that you've ever done, and it's filthy rags in the eyes of God. Or you can have the robe of righteousness that Christ will give you, and you will stand there perfectly sinless. You see, I'm sinless in the eyes of God. Now, I'm still living in the flesh, and every morning when I wake up, I'm probably going to sin somehow, somewhere. But it doesn't count. You see, I'm sinless in the eyes of God. I'm going to heaven not because I'm good. I'm going to heaven because Jesus Christ was perfect, and he's made me perfect. This next verse is going to explain it maybe just a little bit clearer. It's a little tongue twister, so stay with me as I read it. It says, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see, there's, there's only two ways. It's your righteousness or God's righteousness. Why wouldn't you choose the righteousness of Christ? And the reason most people stumble and they slip up at that is because of pride. They are not willing to admit that they're a lost sinner, and that they need God's righteousness. They're trusting their righteousness. And God wants you to deny your righteousness and submit yourself to the righteousness of Christ. Now, this next verse is going to summarize my whole presentation, all in one verse. It says, to him that worketh not. You cannot work your way to heaven. But... And we're back to the letter B. But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Now that's me and you. His faith is counted for righteousness. You see, the moment I got saved and I put my faith in God's righteousness and he moved it over to my name, when I put my faith in that, that's when I got saved. It's by simply believing That's all God's asking you to do is believe the gospel that's found in scriptures and put your faith in Christ's righteousness and stop trying to work your way to heaven. It won't work. Now, this is all you have to do to be saved. Uh, Forty years ago I got saved and it worked for me. It'll work for you today. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's a promise from God. Whosoever, anybody can be saved, everybody should be saved, and you could be saved. And here's how it works. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All you have to do is believe with your heart and call out to God and say, God, I want to be saved, and put your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I was 22 years old, June 30th, 1977, 40 years ago. I was a lost sinner going to church, trying to earn my way to heaven. Somebody from the Baptist church came and uh, showed me the gospel. That night, for the very first time, I prayed out loud, and I said, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I deserve to go to hell but I want you to save me. I want to have your righteousness, and I want to put my faith in you to give me eternal life. And I don't remember what I said. There's no such thing as some magical words to say, but I do know I opened up my heart, and I was so honest with God. And I said, God, I am a sinner, and I don't deserve to be saved, but will you save me? And I'm telling you, when I got saved... There was a peace that came over me. Because before I got saved, I would lie awake at night. And I'd stare up at the ceiling and I'd say, Lord, what's the meaning of life? How do I, how do I get to heaven? I'd always, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to know that I was going to heaven. Because my religion, all they could offer me was a bunch of ifs and maybes. And I knew there was something more out there than that. And that's when he sent these two men from the Baptist church. And they opened up the Bible. And they showed me how to be saved. And I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. Are you willing to get saved right here, right now? 
and pray and ask God to save you. Won't you do it today? Thank you.